بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters Islam and welcome to a talk about وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين meaning mercy to mankind so we'll go through a journey but I will start at the end so you'll understand the importance of the beginning I want you to imagine that on judgment day where it's 50,000 years where the sun leaves its orbit comes close to your head well people will be drenched in their sweat and everyone will say nafsi nafsi myself myself where everyone will run away from anybody else يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ شَأْنُ يُغْنِيهِ Everyone will flee, even from your spouse, your children, your family, everyone else. Where the hellfire will come, controlled by 70,000 rains. Every rain is controlled by one 70,000 angels. And you will hear a caller say, أَيْنَ فُلَانِ ابْنِ فُلَانِ Where is So, the son of So? هَلُمَّ لِلْعَرْضَ عَلَى الْجَبَّارِ Come for me. You're summoned to answer questions. And you will hear a caller say, What would you do at that time to stay away from the hellfire and attain heaven? يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ Even the criminal at that time will actually wish they would sacrifice their whole tribe, their whole wealth, their whole health, their whole life to stay away from the hellfire and attain Jannah. And you will hear a sound say, طَلَبْنَا مِنْكُمْ أَقَلَّ مِنْ ذَلِكَ أَنْ تَقُولُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهَ فَأَبَيْتُمْ We asked of you less than that to say there is only one deity deserving to be worshipped but you refused. And here we will go back to the beginning. The word in itself, the invitation, an answered dua, a supplication, a one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent for humanity and the worlds to take him away from the hellfire to attain Jannah, to take away the darkness in the light of knowledge, to take away the slavery of other slaves to the slavery of the Lord of the slaves. How much would you pay for a man that will take your hand away from the hellfire into heaven? Hence, we go back in the past to know and feel and understand who was this chosen of a chosen of a chosen. Where Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula created the creations and from the creation he chosen the righteous. From the righteous he chosen the prophets. And from the prophets, he chosen the messengers. And from the messengers, he chosen Uri Azm, the five. From the five, he chosen the Khalilan, the two. From the two, he chosen the one. Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. So you'll understand we're talking about a human being, the best of creation, not like any other. So we'll know why he was actually sent as a gift by Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. Why was he the answered dua of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam? Who was this mountain of a man that actually there was no other, no one to precede him and no one to have that legacy after him? Very unique indeed. How could he be the one that chosen by Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula to carry the message, the seal of the prophets? No one else would be able to compete with him. How could he be raised among all? How could he lead all when they're resurrected even in the Jerusalem? It must be a very specific and a very special human being indeed. And what made him so? But we have to only follow what we're given today. There are so many avenues and so many categories we can actually follow under the banner of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we are going to talk about just Rahmah lil alameen, mercy to the worlds and the nations. Let us talk about a human being when he was born, things changed, people changed. Even though they were persecuted in the beginning, turn around in a few years, they led the world. What kind of character was that? Which one that we will need the most? According to Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, on the Sahabati Ajma'in, 
when he was asked by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Do you love me more than your family?" He says, "Yes." Do you love me more than your wealth? He says, yes. More than you saw? He said, no. So obviously he was saying the truth. So he stopped. He says, lay sabat. Not yet. You have not completed your faith, Umar. Till you love me more than your family and your wealth. He stopped for a few seconds and he ran back to him. He says, now I love you more than myself. He says, ya Umar. Now, Umar. And he was asked why. Actually, he was actually explaining this situation to his own, his own son, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. Is what took you a few seconds and ran back to him. He said, I remember that day that I started with who I need more, myself or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I will need him more than myself because he will intercede for me that day where even prophets and messengers will say, Lastu laha, I'm not for it. He will say, Ana laha, ana laha. I am for it, I am for it. So you'll have to understand this human being is very unique where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ We have honored and elevated and dignified your honor. In your name is magnificent. No one would be able to come to the fold of Islam and be embracing the word to say, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهُ only. You will have to continue and say, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ I bear witness there is only one deity deserving to be worshipped, and I also bear witness to be Muhammad وسلم, to be his slave and his messenger. Not only that, in Yadhan is also mentioned. You cannot just declare, أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَا إِلَّا اللَّهُ You also have to say, أَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدُ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ in Iqama is mentioned similarly. Not only that, in Natashahud, why you're praying, you're still saying the same. Very unique individual indeed. But you will think that he's just a mercy to mankind. That's not the case. I mean, in all different nations and tribes, for everyone, even the jinn, a creation that is not to be seen. Even then, the jinn comes from Janin, something that is hidden. Insan, Anasa, so you can see. In that essence, we'll talk about even the young, the old, men, women, children, believers, disbelievers, animals, not only animals, even a palm tree, a trunk of a palm tree. Amazing. Type of a mercy unmatched, unheard of. When you think about it, when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was dealing with a young boy. His name is Umayr. I'm sure you heard the story. Ya Aba Umayr, Aina Nugayr. What happened to Nugayr? Nugayr was a small bird, a sparrow that he used to have. And all of a sudden, he would talk to him, he would have him as a friend. But one day, he saw him crying. He said, What happened to him? Then the way that the sparrow, that bird died, he stayed with him for as long as it took to see him smiling as he saw him crying. There's a young lady, uh, the story of the Qilada. Qilada is like a necklace. That young girl came with Prophet Muhammad وسلم, even at the time of war. When the war is over, he looks around. He was looking, and she's actually narrating this story. She's saying as if he was looking for me, so she made herself to be a parent. Are you looking for me, O Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu salam? says, yes, come, come. She runs to him, and from the spoils of war, he gives her a necklace, placed on herself, on her neck himself. And she says, Wallahi, I have never taken that necklace off since it was placed by his beautiful hand on my own. And she made in her own wasiyah, she wrote in her own will, that even when I'm buried, I want to be buried with this necklace. So when I'm resurrected, so I would run to him. She says, Ya Rasulullah, do you remember me? I am the same girl that you placed the necklace upon. What made that bond even between him and the young boy and the young girl? How about an animal that came to him with the camel among the Ansar where he made him go hungry. The camel went to him and he complained about him. O oh, Messenger of Allah والسلام, I am hungry. My owner makes me do more than I can. So he says, who is the owner of this camel? He says, here I am O oh, Messenger of Allah He says, taqillaha fee. 
the, the camel is telling me you're, you make him go hungry, you make him work so hard. He Be conscious, be mindful of Allah in treating your own camel. Well, he used to stand on the trunk of a palm tree given the sermon. And after they, they build the pulpit for him to stand and give a sermon upon on Fridays, he hears the anin, the sad sound that the palm, the trunk tree actually made. He goes down to caress it and give his comfort. And he tells us that you will be with me in heaven. The only time that it was subdued, comforted. He sees a man where Prophet Muhammad used to play with Hassan and Hussein. He used to run to them, kiss them, hug them, carry them. He's عَجَبًا أَتُقَبِّلُونَ أَوْلَادَكُمْ I wonder, you kiss your children? He says, yes. He says, I have ten children. I haven't kissed any of them. So what do I do? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala snatched the mercy from your heart, مَنْ لَا يَرْحَمْ لَا يُرْحَمْ Those who have no mercy upon others, about the creation, the Creator will not have mercy upon them. If you think even in the stages of war, how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had mercy upon others. Not only that, if you go in the stages of that, his own life, to see how he was, how he had treated his own children, even his own parents, whether the one he's seen or not, after even their death. Even the people that actually wanted to kill him, the people that told him that you're a liar, that you're a magician, a soothsayer, and so on. Never he even dealt with them in a way that they should be dealt with. He was above, risen above all, how he had that mercy in his heart. As Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi huda, even he told them how he treated others. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضْضًا غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضْضُ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ If you were harsh-hearted, difficult to deal with, they would have fled forsook you and fled from amongst you. Even the Bedouin that came in, not even a Muslim, he came in from a long journey, comes into the Medina, Masjid al Nabawi, that Masjid that we all know and love. There was no a comfort zone in the trip. There was no golden arches. There was no restrooms in the trip in the desert. So once he goes inside the Masjid, he relieves himself, he urinates. Even though the Sahaba wanted to choke the man, Prophet Muhammad says, La tutrimu, don't cut him off. Leave him. And after he's finished, pour a bucket of water over it. The man sees the mercy of Prophet Muhammad how he deals with him. Even in such a place, man that he never met, he never knew before. He protected him. So he says, Oh Allah, Allahumma arhamni wa Muhammad wa la tarham ahadam min ba'dina. Oh Allah, have mercy upon me and Muhammad only. And don't forgive any don't, don't have mercy upon anybody else. Even then, Prophet Muhammad is trying to teach that man and teaching us. He says, You restricted a great one. He says, Oh Allah, have mercy upon us all, as indeed you have mercy upon us all. You will see how he even respected the elder. The father of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Abu Quhafa himself, when he wanted to become and embrace Islam, he said, at rajul You made him go through difficulties, oh Abu Bakr, why would you do that? We should have gone to him. He should not have come to us. When even you see an older woman that comes, has to carry something on her own. In one narration it says that hatam, even the wood she's carrying on her head, an older woman. So Prophet Muhammad وسلم, carries the wood on her behalf. Even runs some errands for her. Carries what she had to carry. Takes her weight even to her home. In other narrations says that she said, I have nothing to give you. I have no means to be able to reward you in what the, you've done for me. But the only favor I can do for you is I can tell you, there is a man amongst us that is trying to separate between the families. He's telling us that there's only one God. Stay away from him. Don't listen to him. His name is Muhammad. He says, O oh, Amatullah, O oh, female slave of Allah, don't you know that I am Muhammad? 
She says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu annaka Rasulullah. The stories are endless. If you think about how Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam even dealt with the people that were bad to him, even when the people that had the intention to kill him in the morning, even when he asked Ali radiallahu anhu an Ali bayt al you stay here instead of me. And in the morning, even though these people were coming to kill me, give them back their rights. Even if Amr ibn Wood, the one, the fierce fighter, the one that came to kill him, when he died, they wanted to pay for him. He says, we do not do that. Take him. The ones that actually put the pebbles on his own beautiful feet, they'll become bloody. Even then, when the angel of the mountains came with the archangel Gabriel السلام, to say, these people here, those who harmed you, this did not believe in you. I am the mountain of, I'm the angel of the mountains. I come with a permission from Allah subhanahu wa jalla fiwla. In on your own command, I will set them asunder, bury them alive. If you were in his position, what would you do? People made a mockery of you, humiliated you, did not believe in you. Not only that, did not leave you alone, but he, they actually persecuted you in a way that made you be harmed. Not left you alone, but they harmed you. In your position, and you know you're the messenger of God. You would have that in him, but not him. He says, leave them. Maybe from their offsprings, from their progeny and lineage, those who will come and say, one day there's only one God. When he was dying, when Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was even dying, when he had Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu lead the prayer, he still looked at us and smiled when he heard us pray making sure he's comforted that the Ummah will be in good shape after he goes. Even in his deathbed, his Ummati, Ummati, Malli Ummati Ba'di, Ar-Ruhama, the merciful ones who look after it. And Jibreel alayhi salam heeds the call, as Wallahi Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula, will not let you down in your Ummah. Even then, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he resurrected, the first thing that comes to mind, he says, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati. Even when he comes out after the resurrection in the grave, he will worry about whom? He will worry about us, his Ummah, not himself, not others. He actually says, for every prophet and messenger was an answer dua, a supplication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer for sure. But every prophet and messenger have used it in this dunya. And some of them used it against their own people. But I have saved my own. I have saved my own dua, the supplication, for my own ummah on judgment day. Imagine then, at the time of resurrection, he will actually say, Ya Rabbi Ummati, Ya Rabbi Ummati. An amazing man, even in the time of battle, he would tell the army as they're going, him and his successors after him. This is an army going to fight, to stay alive, to defend. At Daf'u wa Talab, even or. It's not our topic now. But even then, he says, and his successors after him, the Ten Commandments of War do not kill a child, do not kill a woman, do not kill an old man, do not kill an animal. Do not cut a tree, do not pollute their water, do not burn their homes, do not invade them at night. When he was asked why you should not invade them at night, he says, so you may not wake the nursing mother and child. Even in the state of war, he cares about the nursing mother and the nursing child. Amazing. And he says, you will find those who devoted themselves to worship God in their own ways. Leave them to worship God in their own ways. We cannot force anyone to believe in anything else. He's leave them. They devoted their lives to worship God in their own ways. Leave them to worship God in their own ways. Fight only those who fight you. Isn't that amazing? Even then, he would say, Ahsan al-Qitla. Even then, the hostages were, was, were treated properly. Even then, when you had to kill someone, you had to do it properly. Even every aspect, even the animals on the slaughter, he will tell you, 
Even the animals watching, the mother or the son, or at such the Avdin, he says, do you want to kill it twice? Make sure it doesn't see his own. What kind of human being was that, Akhi and Mukhti, my dear brothers and sisters? One like no other indeed. When you come and hear those people who call that most merciful among human beings, is mulazama. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him that attribute. As a gift to mankind, I have sent you to be a mercy to creation and different nations. Even Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi'ala has given us that gift. People have the audacity to say that he is this and he is that. Waliyadu billah. How could he be portrayed in such when he himself, when he had the opportunity to get back the people that killed their own family members in front of him for the simple crime that they simply says, Ahad al Ahad. The, you see history repeats itself. At that time, over 1400 years ago, early Muslims were persecuted just like the early Christians. The simple fact is we made those, all these deities to be one God. The crime is to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Apparently it is a crime still to say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah then. And even then when they kicked him out of their homes, they were driven out, taken away their homes, taken away their wealth, taken away their belongings. Could you imagine your mother has a spear in her private part? Could you imagine your own father being killed in front of you? And you being opposed to it and forced to say that this insect is my Lord. And come back to say whatever it is you have to say. As if you see people sawed in half or taken apart or even have coals in the back. They had holes in their back like Habab al Rat radiallahu anhu. Even then, when he had a chance to get them back after the conquest of Mecca, of years back after they betrayed the covenant, starting to be the aggressor ones, coming back with a 10,000 army strong, the conqueror of Mecca, and everyone flees there, everyone is afraid. He will get us back. And when he's in the command, in the power position, what do you think I will do to you? Akhun Karim, Ibn Akhun Karim, a generous man, a kind, gentle man, a child of a son and generous, kind man. By Allah, I will say only what my brethren said. I will not hold you accountable today. Go, you're free. A man that has the power to set asunder the mountains, to destroy the people that humiliated him, sets them free. A man that had the power to get his own rights back, his own land back, his own family back, his own dwelling back, he says, go, you're free. A man that says the people that had that own helmet inside of his own body, he says, Allahumma, oh Allah, have mercy upon my people, they know not what they do. Even though making dua against them would be fitting at that time. He still made dua for them. Allahumma hadi daus, Allahumma hadi ta'if. Wa atibihim muslimin, bring him to me as Muslims. Amazing, amazing man. It only had to be purified by Allah subhanahu wa jalla bi'ula. When his heart was taken and cleansed. As if it is that portion that was taken away. No illness, no animosities, no hatred toward anyone. Teaches us how to forgive others. Give for those who deny you. Reach for those who cut you off. Do not oppress those who oppress you. And forgive those who don't. Reach for those who cut you off. The teaching of a merciful one indeed, led by example, like no way of any other path. And our role is to simply follow in his footsteps. To be able to walk the talk. And only wish that most of us can only see him in a dream. Or maybe even had the honor to live with him maybe for one day. Or even had seen that beautiful smile on his face. When he says, لا تحدثوني عن أصحابي do not speak behind anyone's back among my friends. I do not wish to have any illness or animosities toward others in my heart. But there's only one shafi'ah. 
There's only one thing I will leave you with, that I will leave the floor open for questions and answers. There's one thing that keeps this poor slave of Allah going. One narration when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was seen crying. He says, why are you crying, O Messenger of Allah He says, I miss Ahbabi. I miss my beloved ones. He says, we are here, we are around you. She says, no, antum ashabi. You are my companions. By my ahbab, my beloved ones. This is the one that I miss. She says, sifhum lana ya Rasulullah. Who are they? He says, those who believe in me without seeing me. In one narration. In the other, those who hold on to sunnati in the fasada ummati, even though you're holding on to, your, to his sunnah, holding on to it, even though it's very difficult when everybody else left it. When you walk the talk, when you actually, when he comes to amongst us, would you imagine that he will know us to be Muslims? Will he actually, if you walk and talk and dress and act and behave and eat and dress everything, everything in your life, will he actually know you to be a Muslim? Will he say, Ummati, Ummati? Will he say, Suhqan, Suhqan, Liman Baddala wa Ghayyar? Get away from me and know you not for those who change and exchange. Could you imagine being among those who misses, those who long to see, those who shed a beautiful tear, a best drop of a water that ever touched the ground was a beautiful tear that he shed for us. He says, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says one of the one of them is like fifty of you. He says, "Don't you mean one of us is like fifty of them? We will never be able to reach the at the attain of the level of the Sahaba. Never, ever. Allah subhanahu wa taala chose the Sahaba to be the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There is no way we will ever attain that. But it's mahmul. It is carried for another meaning." What he explains is how come he says, "Antum tajiduna ala al-khair awana wa hum la yajidun." You find others will help you to hold on to La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. A righteous environment, a righteous company that will make you hold on. Revelation bestowed upon me as you see me. I am teaching you, I am amongst you. But La yajidun. Who do we have amongst us, Akhi al The infrastructure, the support, the environment, not only that, we're persecuted as you. And some of us actually change their name, change the, the whatever it is, the change, take Sindhaf, take this and take that. Difficult holding on to a hot red stone in this time to be able to do so. You may be brothers and sisters here in Victoria, BC. May Allah bless you all. Allah, I'm so proud of you with your time and effort that you placed to put these events together. You're lucky. But I have traveled around the world enough to know how others are persecuted in their own. Where to flee? Yaj'alul halimu hayrana. The time will come. You don't know where to live, how to hold on to Islam. Do I go back home or not? Among the signs of times, تَجْعَلُ الْحَلِيمُ حَيْرَانًا Fitan, difficulties, turbulence, the tests that you'll go through. Where do I live? How do I live halal? How do I get my money? How do I spend my money? How do I get this? How do I do that? How do I wear this? How do I get it? How do I live? How do I study? How? Difficulty, wallahi. So he's telling you, have ulid al-Islam gharibah wa sa'udu gharibah kama ulid. Yes, Islam started as being strange, unique. They used to hide to pray. And it will come back to that. Urwa, Urwa. Yes, it will be taken apart. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among the Uraba, among the unique ones, among the few, among the qaleel, among the ones that are holding on to his sunnah, when everybody else is let go. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to meet him in Jannah with no accountability or previous punishment. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, Allah to die in Medina to after a long, healthy, righteous life and to be buried in Baqiya. Ameen. Wa akhir da'wan. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in. Jazakum la'anna khayra wa sallam alayhi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
with this, the topic is over. It's a long topic, but I see the audience, so I know who I'm talking to. So I'm just going to leave the floor open, inshallah. If you have any questions and concerns, by all means, feel free. If not, you know the drill. I'll be asking you questions. Yes, with that. Oh, can you explain to us that he is um, like more about the um, one of the picture view, like for the for the reward? Right. Please. Yeah, the scholars, as I mentioned before, that it's impossible for any of us to attain the level of the closeness and the high level of the Sahaba. It's a given because you understand how even uh, Abu Bakr was uh, the 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 qiyas, the parallel analogy in that essence. What he is, what are, what they are. You, you will know the reason why we will never be able to attain them. So he says, among the six, the, the ten Ashram of Ashram, we're given a glad tiny that we go on agenda. Six of them on the in the hand of Abu Bakr Siddiq. So whatever they do, it will be on the right hand side scale of Abu Bakr Siddiq. So everything we do will be on the right hand side of the Sahaba. So it's impossible for us to catch up to them. Even the Tabi'een, you understand what the Sahaba used to do, right? Everything we do, they will be getting the reward because of the conquest of anything else. Any Muslim around the world, they will get their reward. So it's impossible for us to catch up to them. So we will never be able to get the level of the Sahaba. So I just put that the right straight. So uh, uh, even the Abu Bakr Siddiq, when, when, when Prophet Sallam was talking to him, he says that's the case. Even like uh, uh, the, the six of, of the of the ten that were given a glad tiding, who was the reason Abu Bakr Siddiq has become, he gets everything else that he does. So for us to be able to do this, we'll never be able to attain it. Even the Tabi'een used to cry. The Tabi'een. The ta who are the Tabi'een, by the way? Maybe I should ask questions just in case you're falling asleep. What is the Tabi'een, that uh, category? What is the Tabi'een? Yes? Fantastic. They did not see Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly, but they've seen a Sahabi. What is a Sahabi then? What's the definition of a Sahabi? Maybe this will be like a... Nice time to speak about this a little bit. The experience of that revelation at the same time with the Prophet Okay, and there's another condition, there's more. They've seen Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but did not Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salul saw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He did see him. He prayed in the first line. But is he a Sahabi? Of course not. So there's more to it than just that. Not only that, the scholars even say, what about the, a blind person, you see? If it's that the only uh, uh, definition of a Sahabi, then Abdullah ibn Maktoum, he would not be. Abasa wa tawalla, and ja'ahu al-a'ma. Okay, so it, it, one of the definitions that you've seen or born at the time that you met or had the, the pleasure to meet Prophet Sallam or seen with him or sit with him and so on. What else? Because as I mentioned, Abdullah ibn Salul, Abdullah ibn Salul he used to pray in the first line. But is he a Sahabi? Of course not, he's not a Sahabi. And of course in that one state, it says that the Prophet ﷺ was pleased with him, or died in the state of Imam, that he, in the end he done, he done so. So some of the difference of opinion among the scholars, not necessarily uh, just seen, and so on. So the Tabi'een, they did not see him, nor they had the definition, but they actually seen a Sahabi, uh, a, a companion of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi used to cry. They actually used to cry. You know why they used to cry? Because yes. the Tabi'een, they were Sahabi because they missed that time Right on. Okay, there's one. What's the other one? They missed. That's true. But they used to cry for something. The topic that we're discussing. The, the question. The blessing. Okay. So they said the companions, they beat us, man. We will never be able to, to attain their level. They beat it. I'm not talking about 1,300 years back. I'm talking about... Just, a, you know, and one generation over. The best of generations are mine. That's it, best of generations. The, the, those three. We're just poor people, man. We're just like hanging in there, man. Just, my name is still whatever. Allah help us. So they, they said that they beat us on, on race horses. They were fast horses. But we are crippled mules. The Tabi'in are complaining. So then we are, how do we ever catch up? This are on a racehorse? Like a solid Arabian, not because I'm the Arabian. <laughs> solid racehorse, whatever it is. Okay, and we are on people, how could we ever catch up? If you follow their footsteps, you will meet them. And that's our goal, man. The whole life, what's your purpose of life? Okay, I don't want to go philosophical on you out here, but we just <laughs> stick on the topic for now. And I'm hoping that answers your question. It's just a carry that we, we he says, Antum tajiduna ala al-khayri awana. In your company of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
Who would come and say, and wallahi, it's a true story. My wife is here, we'll testify to that. I was in a different city. I'm not going to mention the name of the city. I was walking around in the mall. <laughs> and I was, I, I, and that sister in humanity comes toward you. <laughs> and then you say, you know, that Sheikh Muhammad Hassan Hamadullah said, you know, he came to Canada once, and the Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim Hamadullah is actually explaining and saying the story. It's when he came to the, uh, he came down to Canada to visit us once. He, he comes off the plane and he goes, he looks down, he goes, Astaghfirullah. <laughs> then he goes, looks to the right, he goes, Astaghfirullah. <laughs> then he looks to the left, he goes, Astaghfirullah. <laughs> he goes, how many brothers live in here, man? How do you live here? It's true, how do we live here? We get desensitized, unfortunately, right? It becomes a norm, which shouldn't be, but that, unfortunately that's what it is. Now you look down, you see, at least in Toronto, I'm not sure what Victoria is like. You see pictures on the, on the ground. You know, there's marketing on the ground now. Even in the, in, the, in the malls, you'll see pictures on the ground. You look up, what do you get? Astaghfirullah, there's billboards galore. <laughs> Where do you look, man? So he's, he's just telling us, how are you brothers living here? That's what I mean. He says, Antum tajiduna ala khayri amana. You cannot have this. They had the best of companions, the best of generations helping each other to do good, to do righteous. The infrastructure of Islam was solid. Who do you have here? Yeah, you have Justin Bieber, you have uh, uh, Madonna, this, uh, that's the idols of these are the people that look up to. These are the, who, who do we have? The infrastructure is not the same. Holding on to La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah is difficult. Just to keep your name, to keep your beard, to keep your hijab, difficult. So he says, they'll not have that support as you have here. Awan. That's his explanation. He says, we're living in a difficult time. They're not. There's, at the time, they had the different fitna. I'm talking about that after the persecution, after they settled, after they had their own, the, you know, uh, were uh, the hudna and, uh, uh, and all that early stages where the Islam is, after they had their own state in Medina and all of that stuff. Islam was flourishing and strong and it was in the, in the lead and so on. We had the khilafah, we had, we had, we had. So nowadays, it's very difficult. Very difficult. Allahu Is there... Any other question that you may have? If not about this topic, we'll open the floor. Uh, it's a contractual obligation for me to stay here for at least an hour, I believe. So. <laughs> Just kidding. Go ahead, I'll come back to you. Please go ahead. Um, could you comment on what Islam says about slavery? Um, sure. There was a comment in a similar forum by someone in the audience, and they said that Islam does not categorically um, Say anything against slavery. Okay. No problems. We'll take that, inshallah. But look at reality first. Let me paint the picture for you and give you a recent uh, example that happened in the States. When they actually abolished slavery. What happened and how did they do it? And what was the consequences of how they did it? Just to tell you that example, to know how Islam is a practical religion, how they actually handled it with wisdom. Okay. So what happened when they actually said, you know, the black people are free? What happened? That's, they had a problem. They had a, what, you know why? Because all the black people, all of a sudden, they're just gone. You know what that means? They had a place to stay, to live in. They had a food to be given. And they had a job. And all of a sudden, all the white men said, go, you're free. You're no longer a slave. It was a disaster. Because all these black people had no place to live. Had no jobs. Had no food. No money. You understand? So what Islam Ufti does is a gradual training. Even alcohol was actually forbidden in a gradual manner. It's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. He knows his creation and how, how to handle it in a, in a proper term. So just talking about slavery for now. So it, before Islam, this was uh, something that, uh, the slavery was, uh, was something even worse, right? Islam restricted the avenues and expanded the routes, the, the exports, the exports out. In, import was one. You see, it restricted, it closed the valves of slavery. I'll explain, inshallah. For example, before Islam, if you, uh, if you owe somebody money and you cannot pay, what happens? You're a slave. <laughs> okay? You want the lineage of this person? Okay, I'll give you my, uh, my daughter and whatever it is. If not, you're a slave. Not just from wars. It is, uh, there's so many, there were so many ways that they will, you will be a slave. They will capture you, they will do this, they will, you will lost something, whatever it may be. You will be a slave. Islam restricted the in valves, the input of how you can become a slave. Islam only restricted it to wars and for reasons. 
and he opened up the floodgate of how you can free a slave. Okay, to expiate your sin, free a slave. You want to do uh, something that is good, free a slave. You took an oath, you want to uh, uh, purify your, the, the oath, free a slave. You want to do something righteous, free a slave. You want to raise your, free a slave. You understand? So it was done gradually. Okay, Uhti. But uh, in itself, when فَمَنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ is actually is a connotation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta gave us an indication that there will come a time that there will be no slavery. What kind of slavery we have right now? It's white slavery or the women, whatever slavery. And I'm not going to go there, but you understand. I, I hope you know what I'm talking about. There's a different type of slavery. But does Islam, even at the time of slavery, even at the time, we were told how to handle. How do we deal with them? How, do, how are we supposed to be as a Muslim? What is the teaching? Say how do you handle even your slave? Or even the person, a servant that works for you. How? Mercy. You still have mercy upon them. They eat from what you eat. Yeah, it's not like uh, what they tell you. You're not allowed to drink from this water fountain. You can't see in the, uh, sit on the same bus. No, no, no. Even slaves had rights in Islam. Slaves had rights. Yeah. So it was forbidden gradually, Ukhti. Restricted to only at the time of uh, wars for a reason. And they were given... Uh, rights and they were given a chance to be able to uh, ransom themselves or buy themselves out or 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 a declaration of faith and that's it Wallahu alam. did that uh, give you a bit of information Wallahu alam. Yes. I was going to add one point Please. To, um, for slavery like in Islam correct me if I'm wrong Please. Um, you can you can get married to your slave which yeah. is, is very it's not like when you think that that's right it's, it's really deep that's actually there's no difference Maybe it can be that, like, maybe like the job description, as they say, a slave. But back in the day, where you know, like, even whatever they do as slavery, you know, what happens in the past and mm -hmm. Michael and all this, what happened, they cannot get married. And the families, for example, like in England and all these places, yes. uh, they always make even like movies about it. Like, yes, that's have, okay. you know, like they fall loving with each other at the end, you know, they cannot marry because they are a slave, right? And, yeah, yeah, and not only that, the child becomes free. So there's always a way out, you see? So they restrict the, 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 the narrow, the avenue of coming in, the funnel. And they open the gates of how to free them. You see? And that was the mercy and the wisdom of the gradual transformation and transition from slavery to freedom. Allah, God knows best of course. Anybody else has uh, questions? Yes, please, Ukhti. stages of, you know, is it obligation of Mubah, Makruh, all that. I don't want to go there yet, but just to answer your question. Just to answer your question. Okay, uh, let me give you an example. Did you hear the question? Okay, you heard the question? Can you repeat it one more Okay, no problems. I'll, I'll, I'll give you, four minutes we have? Four minutes. Okay. Uh, let me give you, an, she said, you know what, some people eat with their fingers and then with the intention of getting a reward and or do we get sin if we eat with a fork and a knife and others and so on. Let me give you something that we can relate to uh, because of the minutes of the time that we're up, but I'll give you an example. Somebody has long hair. Okay, just to give you an example, okay? Long hair. We asked the brother, why do you have long hair? Because my intention is to imitate Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right into the shoulder. He says, you get rewarded for having something like long hair with your intention. Then we ask another brother from another mother. <laughs> has long hair. Why do you have long hair? He says, because I like ACDC. I have to kill your mother, I raped your sister. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> okay, he says, you know what? With your intention, it's totally different with the intention of you going to imitate Prophet Muhammad Bissam. He says, you know, we see a third person, we have long hair. So why do you have long hair? He says, I don't want to imitate Prophet Muhammad Bissam. I don't want to imitate the ACDC. We say, Anta fi amri mubah. You are in a permissible zone. Permissible zone. Yeah, so it is the intention is how we are judged, not just the action. What's your intention? 
So we say in the worldly affairs, everything in your life, what is the origin? Al-aslu fiha al akbar, meaning everything is halal, everything is lawful in this life. Everything in your life is lawful and permissible, except what God Almighty told you not to do. And Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, told you not to do. But the acts of worship are the exact opposite. Al-aslu fiha al wal mana. So we say there is prohibition. You cannot worship God in, uh, can you go to McDonald's worship, uh, you know, I mean, sorry. <laughs> can you go to McDonald's, wear, dress, whatever you want? They will give you a specific uniform. They will tell you, come at this time, go at this time. They will give you a manual. Here's the rules and regulations. Right? But can you, there's, here's how to do it, here's not to do it. Emily Post, Emily Post, you can only, you know, drink tea with the pinky up, hush, hush. <laughs> Outside forks and outside spoons, there's only, there's rules and regulations of how to eat and the etiquettes and manners. So we say, God Almighty Yavuz said, you know what, I created you here, so I want to be worshipped. And they, so when it comes to act, it's the opposite. He tells you what to do, how to do it, okay, and we follow. So everything else is not permissible. And accordingly, we believe there's only one God and that's how we, we follow. So in that essence, Ukhti is with your intention. So it says, Amr al-Muhdad. So when it comes to that, that, that something new, I'm just going to finish here, inshallah. So please understand, life is easy, don't make it difficult. So, I'm just going to leave you with this. Life is easy, don't make it difficult. So what is it then that you do? Your intention is what is uh, you're judged upon. Okay? So anything new, for example, did Prophet Muhammad maybe uh, dress like this? Did he drive a car? That means that every person driving a car is sinful. We have to drive camels. Is that right? No? You understand? This is called the al-ada, not ibadah. So at the innovation, al-aslu fil umur al-ittiba'a. Aslu fil ibadah al-ittiba'a. Laysa al-ibtida'a. This is ibadah. I explained the ibadah. So what is the definition of acts of worship? Kullu ma yataqarrabu bihi al-abdu ila rabbihi min qawlun fi'lin aw amal. Min ma zahara minhu wa batan. Akul ibn Taymi rahmatullahi alayhi. The definition is everything that you do in order for you to come closer to God Almighty of utterance, actions and deeds. Inwardly, meaning intentions, hearts. And outwardly, meaning your limbs, your actions. That's the definition of ibadah. That is restricted. But anything else, a'adah, hil, right? So we say it is permissible, but your intention is the one you're doing it. You're imitating others or are you imitating art or you're not imitating either or? Like the example of the hair, wallahu alam. So please understand, ukhti, I, I hear this all the time and I get this all the time and I just want to make sure my dear brothers and sisters Islam why do we make things difficult why do we make things that is halal lawful to be unlawful so when anybody comes up to you and says haram what's the what's the, the plea is on him he has to come up with the proof to tell you it's haram you understand okay so please understand that part, Ukhti. So with your intention, you can get rewarded with eating with the three fingers. One Prophet Muhammad says, Ya Ghulam, Ya Kul Mimma Yaleek, Sammillah, and all that. So we know that there is guidelines of how we eat. Guidelines, right? And guidelines of what we, guidelines. So we follow these guidelines accordingly. Wallahu a'lam. May Allah show us what is right as right, and follow it, and show us what is wrong as wrong, and stay away from it and guide us, and guide by us, and give, make us reasons for others to be guided by. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as He guides us here in this dunya, to guide us with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hereafter, in the heavens. Wa akhud a'wan, alhamdulillahi rabbil ameen. Wa sallam ala alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'in. Zakum l'khayn, wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I think we are getting the hook. There are some people now coming for the, uh, the, the next... Uh... No, we're good? Okay. You're so kind. We, we have 20 minutes. We have 20 minutes. But uh, 10 minutes for pray. 10 minutes for pray? Yeah. Ten minutes we have to leave. So Ten minutes we have to leave. It's up to you. Okay, we're gonna to have to pray really fast. Yeah. Allah yeah. <laughs> The American it's Expressway. It's up to you. No problems. Okay, so we have twenty minutes. If you have any questions, concerns, remember, no problems. Then, if that's the case, I will ask you questions. Right? We still have ten minutes. Or do you wanna? We, we have twenty minutes in total. Yeah, we have. We have to leave. Uh, in twenty minutes. Okay. So uh, let me ask you questions as a competition between brothers and sisters. Okay. All right. First question goes to the sisters as ladies first. Okay. Can you tell me one example of the mercy of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon that you learned tonight? Uh, I saw your mouth moving. I heard some noises, but I was asleep through the lecture. 
I actually came to this lecture to stay away from my husband and to get away from my kids. <laughs> okay, only, only sisters now. Any of the sisters can tell me if you learned anything about, give me an example of the mercy of Prophet Muhammad. Other to human beings, other to animals, other even solid items, <laughs> liquid, solid, gas, you name it, anything. Have you heard anything today? Yes, Ukhti. When you let the people of Mecca drink from those right on. Fantastic. So when he came back victorious with a 10,000 army strong, these are the people, same people, that driven them out of their homes, killed their parents, killed their children, took away their wealth and uh, uh, possessions, and they ousted them. They, make him, they, let, they actually stayed for three years in a valley where they used to eat leaves of the tree. They were not allowed to give them food, not buy anything, sell anything, marry from them, marry to them. Three years they were ousted. They were kicked out. And they were, years after that they came back victory and they thought they were going to be redemption. What did he say to them? He says, what do you think I will do to you? He says, generous man, <laughs> kind man. Just, I will not hold you accountable today. Go, you are free. So the sisters are up, one nothing. Brothers, give me another example as to show a sign of mercy of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Yes, Habib. Uh, like as he talked, uh, like he talked uh, the, the Prophet alayhi um, he told the companions uh, when they are going to where they have to be really careful about the six things. Right. Uh, you, cannot be, uh, you cannot be killing a child, you cannot be right killing an, an elderly man. You cannot be killing a nurse, uh, nursing woman. Yeah. You cannot be cutting. Uh, you cannot be destroying a house. You cannot be uh, burning a tree. Awesome. Uh, you cannot be killing people. Uh, you cannot be fighting with people dur during the night because you're gonna be waking up awesome. uh, the nursing woman. Uh, and also, you have to be. You have to even like when you're fighting. You have to be fighting that people are attacking you. Wow. Um, this guy is good. You want candy, don't you? I don't have candy for you, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I call him the Ten Commandments. So it's him and after his success after him. I'm going to repeat it for you. So this is an army, remember. This is an army. Even in the state of war, we have nothing called casualties of war. We cannot touch any uh, innocent soul, period. Even in the state of war, him and his companions, success after him, were given the army to fight these Ten Commandments. I want you to compare these Ten Commandments to CNN and Fox News because I love them so much because they're so fair and they're not biased at all. <laughs> right, so here's an army going to fight and even then he's given them these commandments. Please compare. Do not kill a woman. Do not kill a child. Do not kill an old man. Do not kill an animal. Do not cut a tree down. Do not pollute their water. Do not burn their homes. Do not invade them at night so you may not wake the nursing mother and child. You will see people devoted themselves to worship God in their own ways. Leave them to worship God in their own ways. Fight only those who fight you. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's among the among signs. So now they're tied. Uh, in a few minutes we have more. Sisters, do you remember anything else among the examples of Prophet Muhammad? Maybe be on his mercy. And, we, and we're outnumbered because there's not too many sisters. May Allah help you. Sisters power. Yes? Alright, how about the young man that had a sparrow, his, his, the, the, the bird died, the young boy, had, the pet died, and he was crying, and Prophet Muhammad Islam, stayed with him for a long time. He did not want to leave him unless he seen him smile like he's seen them cry. Even the children, he had mercy upon them. Very good, so the sisters are up 2-1. Brothers, tell me something. Take us back home, man. Don't let me down. Yes, Habib. Is anybody else beside this guy? <laughs> yes. Okay. May Allah bless you. Right on. Awesome. The traveler, the wayfarer, he traveled for a long journey. He goes into the masjid. Even that, the sacred place of worship, the mosque. When he inside, he went inside because they didn't have any restrooms around. He went and he relieved himself. He urinated inside the mosque. When they wanted to catch him, Prophet Muhammad says, let him, let him finish. Do not cut him off. Of course, the wisdom behind it. You understand, if you run after a man while he's urinating, he's going to run all over the place. <laughs> So there's also wisdom, not just mercy, behind this tactic to make sure it's restricted in certain areas. And he says, pour water on it. And so he said, the man says, Oh God Almighty, have mercy upon me and Muhammad only. And don't have mercy upon anybody else. He still then, he says, he restricted a great merciful one. Why would he do so? Ask God Almighty to have mercy upon us all. See? So that's fantastic. Yes, Habibi. I was going to discuss this actually. You can see like in our daily life, how the Prophet ﷺ, 
you can talk about like uh, like the human rights actually uh, you know like when people uh, and you know the envir environmental rights for example uh, the professor said if you get if you find any harm for example in the streets yes. remove it for example like here right. or they say like adopt on a highway yeah you know like if you have any harms you know you try to clean it if you're yeah. riding your bike remove something an obstacle from the road exactly and also uh, you know um, the, 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 the mercy of uh, the orphans right on and if you even touch their hair with one single hair you will get one good deed you see and by the way in regarding adopting a highway you know I feel sorry for me to go to a highway and tell them that you're adopted so it may be very difficult for me to <laughs> Really, the fact, oh, highway, dear highway, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you're really adopted. <laughs> okay, so thank you much. So we'll call this a tie, okay? It's a tie. So we'll call it a tie, then let's work on a tie break. And you remember the tie break rule? I'll repeat it from yesterday. I'm going to see a bit of a tricky question. It's open for brothers and sisters now. The fastest hand is raised, it gets to answer the question. But the trick is, as soon as you raise your hand, I stop. I don't complete the question or repeat the question. So if you say it right, you and your team win. If you say it wrong, the other team wins by default. Again, your team members will hate you for life, but no pressure whatsoever. Okay, tie break question is, are you ready? Give me a doof. <laughs> okay, tie break question. What was the story of the necklace? I think this brother had his hand first. Give it to me. He said the magic brother, words. Are you looking at me? Are you calling right me? And he said, yes, come. And he put the necklace on her neck. Good for you. Okay, so that young girl, he placed the necklace in her and says, I want to be resurrected to remember me with the necklace you've given me. Remember the woman that he carried the, uh, the, the, the hatab on her head? The older woman that carried her, her chores. He ran, he carried the wood. He says, she said, don't listen to Muhammad. He says, I am Muhammad. <laughs> So it's amazing how he helped everyone. He actually, in that essence, uh, the brothers uh, win. Power to the sisters. Congratulations, sisters. You are the... <laughs> so fantastic. Everybody is a winner in my eyes. I thank you so much. I thank you. My mom thanks you. My doctor thanks you. Again, uh, I love you for the sake of Allah. Dear brothers and sisters, Subhanak Allahum Hamdik. Nashadu Allah ila istaghfiruk na tuhu alayk. Zakum Allah khayru. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you. Okay, we can pray now and do whatever you like after that. Salaam Okay, uh, inshallah, we will pray, Mami, outside, and, uh, and just a reminder.